once again YouTube, it is me, Base Jalaren, back again so soon with another video, and this time we are doing a haul video with this cat, as always. Kitty cat, kitty cat. Uh, anyway, um, as you could probably tell by my lack of haul videos this month, October has definitely been a lot of a slower month. A lot less things came out this month, and a lot less things came out this month than I expected because a lot of stuff, like maybe four or five volumes that were supposed to come out this month, wound up getting pushed back to November. So, my wallet definitely appreciates that at the very least. So, but I do have stuff to show you today. And the first thing that I have to show is an art book that came out recently. And that would be The Art of Overwatch, which is an excellent release by Dark Horse, which, for, for, for all their faults in their manga publishing, they at least produce some very wonderful art books, and this is no exception. If you like Overwatch, like, in any way, shape, or form, this is definitely, definitely something I'd recommend you buy. It has a lot, surprisingly a lot of stuff. It has not like the most recent stuff, like Doomfist is nowhere to be found in here, but it's got like all like the skins up until like I think the anniversary and like all the sprays and all these character designs and all like the concept art. It is just real nice. It is so good is definitely, definitely something I suggest you buy. And definitely something I suggest you buy on Amazon. Because the regular MSRP of this is 50 goddamn dollars. <laughs> to be fair, it is a really thick book, though, so... But yeah, I didn't wind up getting the special edition that they also had on sale on Amazon. Because I didn't want to drop, like, I think it was like 60 or 70 dollars, which I guess was just regular price. But yeah the art of overwatch very lovely book i can't wait to i haven't like officially inducted it into my i have like a shelf full of art books and i haven't put it in yet and i can't wait to just slide this baby in on in there so yeah there's that and then i have one light novel, and that is the Grimgar, the Grimgar, Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, Volume Three. I haven't seen the anime, but I have been told that this is. This takes place after the anime, so this is an all new content for people who have seen the anime, which I have not. But yeah. More reading for me to do. I, I've, I'm slowly like, plowing through my light novels, because I'm a really slow-ass reader when it comes to, like, books. So, yeah. There's that. Now, on to the manga. And the first volume that I have is Gurren Lagann Volume 1. If you remember from, I think it was last month, I wound up finding Volumes 2 through 5 at Second and Charles, but they didn't have Volume 1, so I wound up just buying Volume 1 off Amazon. It feel, It's kind of anticlimactic because it's Volume 1 out of a series that is unfinished. It, would just, it just kind of arrived in the mail. It's like, oh, good, it's here. And then... Oh, what was really funny is that when it came in the mail, I looked, like, right at the envelope and... It definitely came from, like, Germany, which is why it probably took, like, a whole entire month to get here, and I really should have checked to see where the seller was based, because I could have gotten this a lot sooner, and I was afraid for a second that it was in German. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on like volume one, and now I have officially volumes one through five, which are the volumes of Gurren that are easier to come by. Volume 6 is very, not very rare, I mean there are rarer things, but it is pretty expensive. It goes for like 60 or 70 dollars, depending on where you can find it, and I'm not 100% sure if I'm willing to commit to that, 
but having one through five is like the standard and I'm okay with living with that. And if I ever happen upon the chance where I'm able to pick up volume six, then I'll go ahead and do that. Just just for completionist's sake. So yeah, it's volume one. Garden Robin. We have Rinshaw Now, volume three. It's more Rin hijinks. Like these don't really have a, like a continuous story. These might as well just be just comic long four comas. Just little shorts about Rin. If you're a fan of Rin, why aren't you picking up Rin Sean now? I think there's one more, as far as I'm aware, that's gonna come out. Yeah, it's more vocaloid goodness. Very nice. Then we have Land of the Lustrous, Volume 3. And I forget where I heard this, but I remember somebody saying that if you were interested in Land of the Lustrous and Volumes 1 and 2 didn't wow you, then just stick around for Volume 3, because apparently Volume 3 is where shit gets real. And as someone who has read through Volume 3, let me tell you that shit does in fact get real at the uh, at volume three and now I'm mad hype like like I'm super super into this now like if I wasn't before I am definitely invested if you are interested in Land of Lustrous or if you are currently picking up Land of Lustrous and you're kind of underwhelmed by it, please, please, please stick around for Volume 3, because that is when... I, I know it's asking a lot to stick around for two volumes of kind of semi-interesting nonsense, but Volume 3, I feel, makes it really, really worth it, and I really do insist that you stick around until then, because this actually broke my heart. <laughs> Like, shit in here happens, and it's actually really sad. And it took me by total surprise. But yeah, it's kind of lustrous. And we have Aho Girl, A Clueless Girl, Volume 3. I haven't read this one yet personally, but my husband has, and it gets his seal of approval. He said it was translated, like, the jokes were translated pretty well, so... Yeah, Aho Girl, a clueless girl. If you're in the four coma, this is a four coma. About a stupid motherfucker who likes bananas. Yeah, that's volume three. We have Love and Lies, volume two. This is. Like, I buy manga for really dumbass reasons, and this one is definitely one of those that I bought because the hair was really nice and pretty. Like, there's a confession that I didn't actually tell anybody until now is, sometimes I just buy manga because I like the way the hair on the characters look. I, I just like how it looks, man. I, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, boobies. There's something about hair that I just go like, ooh, gotta get that. Love and Lies, Volume 2. Some more of that dramatic, dramatic stuff. Then we have Please Tell Me Galko-chan, Volume 4. These are always a real treat to have. <laughs> Whenever like one of the, one of these comes out, I always get super excited because I just love the feel of them. Just I love how they're kind of in full color and they kind of look like they were drawn by like somebody with a shit ton of ballpoint pens. And I feel like it's getting pr like it's still like that classic good old Galco Chan feel, but it's getting like progressively like 
more and more like fan servicey, but at a rate that isn't like irritating to me. Like it's kind of eased into like the whole like look at all these boobs, everybody. Like I'm flipping through it, and you've probably seen like a good number of like fan service shots. Yeah, please tell me, Calico Chow, Volume Four. Shit's fallen. You just can't see it. Then we have Hatsune Miku, Bad End Night, Volume 3, which is the final volume of Hatsune Miku, Bad End Night. I kind of really quickly flipped through it. Didn't make much sense because I feel like the finer details probably make sense of the story a lot than just kind of like, ooh, what's in here? Yeah. I, I said before that, I'm like, I might as well just go, like, listen to the song this is based off of and spoil the shit out of it for me, but I never did, because I, I'm i too good for that. So yeah, I waited around until Volume 3 came out. Yeah. The fact that there's, like, actual, like, Vocaloid manga is still, like, a novelty to me somehow. Bad, bad, bad End Night, Volume 3. A really quick series. Like, a lot of, like, the Vocaloid manga, at least, are, like, mercifully short. So if you like Vocaloid, but you don't have a lot of money, well, then, um, good news, not a lot of them are very long. Some of them are even one volume. A majority of them actually are. I think Rinchon Now and Hatsune Miku Bed and Night are the longest ones that are currently out, even. So, yeah. Speaking of final volumes that end Volume 3, we have Ghost Diary, Volume 3, the final volume of Ghost Diary. And, well, Ghost Diary was pretty fairly paced up until, like, a third of the way through this volume and then like somebody realized oh shit that's right we have to end this motherfucker and then it like kicks it into high gear randomly like a bunch of shit gets revealed like not even halfway through and then from there it's just balls to the walls speed all the way to the end and it's all like wait stop what's going on ghost diary please wait wait hold on what's going on please explain and it kind of does while going at a breakneck ass pace. But it's a good enough story, I feel. I just feel the ending was just a little rushed. It could have benefited from, like, one more volume. At least, I kind of feel. Because it goes from, like, you know, not really lighthearted, but kind of, like, you know, just... Uh, like, monster of the week, like, demon hunting. Just to just this breakneck pace... Like, things get super serious. As soon, like, one thing gets revealed, and then things get super serious. And then they just continue to be super serious until the very end. And it's all like, wait, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, I just feel that was the Ghost Diary experience. So, yeah. Another pretty short series for those looking for shorter manga. We have Alice and Zoroku, Volume 2. These, these ones, this series especially, is coming out a little slower. Like, may, maybe it's just because I have a really horrible perception of time, but I feel the last one came out like early July. Now it's like October, and that's a good couple of months. I haven't read this one yet, but it it looks like things actually get serious in this one, which is really interesting, and I'm kind of curious to see the tonal shift, if there is any. Then we have Beasts of Abigail, Volume 2. Some good old shoujo with some nice doggy ears.
and confession time. This is another one of the manga that I bought because I thought the hair was pretty. Like, I'll, I'll buy manga because it's got a nice hair, like art style or the story is interesting, but most of my impulse buys I get because I look at the hair and it's like, that's some nice hair. Some nice floofy, floofy hair. Yeah. It's kind of your standard shoujo with like a fantastical twist. And if you're a furry, well then good news, everyone's kind of a dog. And they've got like like an alpha, omega kind of like hierarchical society going on here. So yeah. Beasts of Abigail, volume 2. Very, very nice. Then we have a new edition, and this is Spirit Circle, a volume one. It's, um, if you've, um, read it, it's by the same author as, um, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, which I hear is actually really good. Like, everybody who's read it says it's actually pretty nice, so if you are interested in the author's work, this is one of them. And it's really interesting. It's about this kid, and he has, like, this mark on his cheek, and he kind of hides it under that bandage, and this new girl comes to town, and it turns out that they're, like, reincarnations of reincarnations of reincarnations, and they've been fucking with each other for, like, hundreds of years, and she's finally just done with his shit, and she's just here to kill him. Yeah. I'm kind of curious to see where this is going to go, because we get to see, like, one of his, uh, two of his past lives, one of which ends pretty abruptly, and the second one is pretty, like, it's, it's a good, decent chunk of the manga. Yeah, we get to see all that. It's a really interesting concept, and I'm really curious to see where it's going to go from here. So, yeah, Spirit Circle, Volume 1. And finally, I got, finally, <laughs> Drug and Drop, Volume 1 and Volume 2, which is the continuation of Legal Drug. And Volume 2 has been out for, like, a really long time. Like, I think it was released in 2015. Like, excuse me while I check here on camera. Oh, it was published in Japan in 2013. I think it was published here in 2015. But regardless, that is a really long time. <laughs> and at first I thought it was just more of Dark Horse's nonsense, because Dark Horse does that thing where they, like, publish something, and then they, they don't update it for, like, a fucking hot while, and you start to wonder if they've dropped it, or if they're not, eh, they, they haven't, and I thought that was just more Dark Horse nonsense, the fact that Volume 2 has been out for, like, years at least, but apparently this is all that's out, like, in Japan, at least as far as my research has taken me. So I don't know what's going on with Clamp, but hey, you guys, um, your, um, your yaoi, Hey guys, um, hey, your overblown Jotaro Kakyoin fanfiction is long overdue, hey, yeah, drug and drop, volume 1 and 2, I'm ready for whenever volume 3 comes out, whenever the fuck that is gonna be, I'm ready, I'm prepared now, alright, and, god damn it, that is everything I've got for this haul. Not as big as other hauls, but still. Like I said before, October is kind of a slower month. Stop fucking cleaning yourself, god damn it. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for this haul, and I will see you all in the next video. While my camera spazzes the fuck out. Goodbye.